Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today on the Dungeon Dive, I am very happy to bring to you all an unboxing of League of Dungeoneers. This is a somewhat advanced copy. This is the, the full Kickstarter version. Uh, the team over at League of Dungeoneers, they sent out a few copies straight from the uh, Chinese manufacturing plant. Uh, kind of bypassing the typical kind of uh, shipping and hub system. So this is one of one of the first copies, and I'm, I'm really happy to be bringing this to you today. This is one of the few kind of a really big box games that I am really looking forward to. Now, usually when I was a backer of of League of Dungeoneers, and one of my golden rules is to to never go all in. I I almost always just do the base pledge, and then a couple little expansions or something if I want them, if they seem interesting to me. However, the team at League of Dungeoneers, uh, they decided to upgrade my, my, my pledge for me as a, as a thank you. So I really appreciate that. So you will be seeing an all-in unboxing. Now, there are some components in here that I know that I'm not going to use, such as the neoprene mat and the sleeves. So I'll probably end up giving those away uh, to a Dungeon Dive patron if somebody wants them. Uh, maybe they didn't go all in and, and they want that that stuff. But let's take a look. I guess when my, my pledge was the base pledge plus the standees. The standees were an add-on. And the standees are actually one of the things that I'm looking forward to the most in this game. Just because I think they will be so useful in so many other games. So this is a full, complete, blind unboxing. I haven't even taken the shrink wrap off yet. So uh, I've been patiently, it's been patiently waiting on my table for this moment. Okay, so let's get started here. This box is absolutely huge. I think the full thing is almost 30 pounds. It's one of the one of the biggest and heaviest boxes I've, I've seen. It will not fit in your standard uh, IKEA shelf, unfortunately. So you're going to have to find a, a special place for this one. Yeah, the box is just absolutely massive and super totally overflowing with stuff. I'm gonna need to get this shrink wrap taken care of, so I will pause the video and be right back. All right, so there, as you can see, about two inches over the box, just absolutely packed with stuff. Uh, let's take a look at this. So this is the neoprene mat. Very nice for those of you who like neoprene mats. I'm sure you will be pleasantly surprised with this. It has the uh, stitched edging there. The colors look really sharp. The writing is legible and it wasn't crumbled up, folded up to where you have a whole bunch of creases. So well done. I think this will make somebody very happy. Somebody I can give this away to on the, on the Dungeon Dive patron. All right, then it looks like we have our tiles here. Let's see. And I think these are the tiles from the kind of Egyptian theme, the desert themed expansion. I'm not quite sure what that is called. I don't remember offhand, but these look like that. And all of the tiles are double sided. Some of the tiles have the same art on the uh, opposite sides and I think a couple of them have some different art. Overall, pretty nice. A little thinner than the um, Warhammer Quest tiles, but overall, pretty nice quality. Good art. The printing looks nice. I think people will be pretty happy with those. Room there. There's another room. Lots of dead bodies. Yeah, the tile art is... is Quite nice. It does remind me quite a bit of Warhammer Quest art, but it also doesn't have quite that kind of cartoony look. A little more look of a little grittier, a little more realism, I guess. Really nice there. 
those sarcophagi, some kind of arcane symbol on the floor. Okay, hopefully we can fall off this bridge if we roll a one and die. I I need I need a deadly bridge. All of my uh, role playing games or all, all of my dungeon crawl games. Nice little uh, T junction there. Looks like some traps there. Some kind of blade trap. Partially collapsed wall. Those rocks look really nice. Very nicely done. Yeah, the detail on the tiles is quite good. I wasn't thrilled with the tiles that I saw in my prototype that I took a look at last year. Uh, one huge, huge thing to say is how quickly they got this thing made and got it out. That is quite the accomplishment. So huge props to the guys over at League of Dungeoneers here because, yeah, I, I, I'm shocked that the game delivered pretty much on time, I think. Crossroads there. Always nice to see a crossroads because you know you're up for some adventuring. Oh, that's a cool, cool shaped room there. That's neat. And then this might be maybe our objective room. So we have a double sided objective room, some kind of throne room there, some kind of sarcophagi there. Maybe you have to search those looking for something. And here we have some larger rooms. So there are some smaller, small rooms and large rooms. So it looks like a six by six and four by four. Really cool mummy there. I know that some of the tiles, I don't know if it's true for all of the tiles, but I know that some of the tiles do have charts where you can interact with the elements on the board. Oh, that's great. Looks like a bridge going over some water there. Some kind of bat flying around. Oh, and a, there we go. A collapsed bridge. Very cool. Hopefully there is a chance to just straight up die off of that thing. And all right, so it looks like those are all of our tiles for our uh, Egyptian themed, desert themed environment. I didn't really see any duplicate tile art, so it looks like there's a lot of unique art on these uh, on the tiles there. I'm going to stack those up and then we will get to, yes, the standees. Okay, let's take a look at the standees here. This is the thing that I am the most excited about. I think there are about 380 or so standees and because this game is a pretty typical kind of fantasy setting with that kind of more exotic uh, desert setting you will get a ton of standees that are useful for a huge variety of games this is kind of like maybe one of the best collections of standees i would compare this to one of the better uh, Pathfinder Pawns sets. But I think these are actually even a little better than the Pathfinder Pawns because they actually have a cutout shape. So you get a, a, a better representation of what your character looks like. And they have facing with unique art for front facing and back. That is super cool. That is especially handy for people who want to use standees in more complex skirmish games. So you don't have to put a little dot or some kind of triangle or some kind of marker to tell which way your, your, your standee is facing. And it looks like, let's just take a look at these here up close. A Saurian elite, a blood demon, a giant snake, a zombie, beast man chieftain, an orc brute, some mummies there. And here we have, looks like these might be some heroes, maybe, I don't know, bandits, I don't know, skeletons, saurians, um, dark elf assassins, giant spiders, uh, more blood demons, more beast, uh, beast man, another giant snake, a goblin shaman. This really is kind of, this game really is a, a, a love letter to kind of old school style 
dungeon crawling. I would put it right up there with Dungeon Universalis, something like Warhammer Quest. This feels like a mix between Warhammer Quest, Advanced Hero Quest, and Dungeon Universalis. Oh, wow, these are great. A Wyvern, a Broodmother, Shambler, some kind of Hydra, a Naga. Oh, I'm so, I'm so excited for these standees. I cannot wait. I just can't wait to use them in other games too. It's so cool to have all of this. And just, they were able to keep the price affordable. It's not a huge waste of plastic. It's a giant. I mean, if, if these were all, if these were all minis in this game, it would have probably been three or $400 and taken up, you know, two or three times the space. So, so nice, so nice. I'm so glad they went with the mini, or the, the standees, I should say. Oh, the Greater Demon. A River Troll. Rider. No, what is that? A Bloated Demon. Minotaur Skeleton. Oh, that's super cool. Gosh, these are so good. These, yeah, these are, like, I really like the standees that came with Dungeon Crusade, but these might top those. I don't know. Those are really nice standees. I love the art that Roger got for those. Tomb Guardian, a Common Troll, an Ogre Chieftain, a Giant Centipede, a Frogling. I'm hoping there is just a list in alphabetical order of all of the standees somewhere within the documentation, or maybe that maybe uh, the team has has some of that information. An Etten, a couple Ettens there. Uh, a Knoll, Saurian War Chief, a Giant Toad, an Earth Elemental, Griffin, Gecko. Oh, look at that guy here. A plague demon. And these kind of look like our, our standard heroes here on this sheet here because we have a shaman, a ranger, a dwarf ranger. We have our elf wizard, our human warrior, our elf alchemist. Yeah, so these are a lot of these are our, our heroes, our PCs. Kind of maybe the, the more unique standees that we might run into. All in all, what a fantastic collection of standees. And then here we have our regular tiles for the, the, the regular set. So let's take a look at these here. So much cardboard dust everywhere. All right, so we have our biggest tile here is this big room. I think that's kind of like a bandit's lair or something. One of our giant objective rooms, our quest rooms there. All right, so we have our passages. I love the checker floor. Great tribute to, uh, to Warhammer Quest there with all the checkered floors. And again, no, no repeating art on, on the tiles. That's, that's quite an achievement. Passages. We have some small rooms here. And a couple more small rooms and some elbows nice rug there and really ties the room together some kind of torture room and then we're moving into some of the larger rooms not Quite as nice a rug there. Perilous bridge. Some kind of office room or some kind of war room, maybe. 
And then we come into our larger rectangle rooms. So again, I think these are our main kind of quest rooms, probably, where we will, where the quest will terminate our objective rooms. Oh, that is great. I love that. That is super cool. The room crumbling away into some kind of lava filled cavern. Or is that magma? I don't know. It's magma in the earth, lava on the surface. Is that the distinction? I don't know. Very cool. Some kind of old throne room. Some more large rooms or some more large square rooms, I should say. Some kind of fountain. Hopefully we can drink the water and have random things happen to us. That looks familiar there. More rooms. Now there's a lot of tiles in this game. Maybe too many. I think I mentioned that in my look at the, um, at the prototype. I'm not sure if we need these many tiles, if, if there's a, a purpose for these, if all of these have things that you can, if all of these have unique things that you can do in them, that's cool. If it's just a bunch of different art, I will probably box, you know, some of them up and, and, and put them away just so I don't have to, to just store them all. But I'm not sure. I know there are certain features in the dungeons that you can interact with. I just don't know if every single tile has has um, interaction, interactive spots on it. And then we have here some more uh, passages. Maybe you might have to jump over that. That would be cool. Some stairs going up and or down. Another passage, 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 passage. Nice T junction there. I always like when dungeons split, when you have to make choices to, of which way to go, find your objective. And I know this game does have that with kind of your, your, your random dungeon elements that you, you will be able to actually explore like in uh, Warhammer Quest where you might go down one way and it ends up being a dead end and then you have to do some backtracking. Another little fountain there. That's a cool shaped room. That's some switches over there. All right, and then we have our doors and other tokens. Let me get these uh, tiles stacked up over here. So pleasantly, there aren't a ton of chits, a ton of, of uh, little cardboard chits that you have to worry about. I am very happy with that. Now, I know there are these cardboard doors. I, I know there were there was an add-on with plastic doors. I don't know if those are in here or not. So may, maybe they're not. Maybe those came separate. Maybe that's something I didn't get. I'm not sure. We'll have to take a look. But here we have our closed doors, our open doors, and our spider webbed doors. Same thickness as the tiles. So nice quality there. And then here we have our main sheet of chits. So that's really nice. One sheet of chits. I like that. We aren't going to need to come up with some kind of elaborate storage solution for the chits. The tiles, on the other hand, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if all the tiles fit back in this box or not. I would be pleasantly surprised if they do. But we have our lantern, some fire damage, health, uh, probably some kind of mana or something down there. Uh, different things that you can keep track of if a room is searched or if a trap, uh, some kind of other trap there, maybe a hole in the floor. Uh, tokens to keep track if you're aiming or dodging, or if you need to reload your uh, your your, wain, your ranged weapon. And then now we have our um, outdoor tiles, and these are a little thinner, so these are more like the little kind of sub maps that you might use in um, in folklore, the affliction. So kind of heavy duty cardstock. So we have a variety of different outdoor environments. That's kind of a little little village there. Outdoors in the sandy area, a farm, some kind of little pyramid. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, these are just going to be just just so much useful stuff for 
all kinds of different games. I think even if you just kind of bought this game as as a toolbox of things to use in other games, you would probably get your value out of it. And I have a feeling that myself and a lot of people are probably going to be playing this game in some kind of weird hybrid way where we're using elements from it, not using elements from it, uh, coming up with house rules, designing our own things for it, kind of turning it more into some kind of uh, hybrid board game slash solo RPG. I know it's almost there already. The one thing I am still a little worried about is having to play with four characters and the characters are pretty complex. I know you can play with fewer than four and you can hire uh, more simplistic mercenaries. So I'll probably be doing that or I will be just kind of developing my own system to play with only two characters and just kind of working out the balance on the fly with that. And then here is the uh, paper map or the, the, the board map. So I, I think the colors are a little brighter on the neoprene mat, but I just prefer cardboard. I'm perfectly fine with this. I like that it just folds up and you don't really have to worry about creasing it. And uh, yeah, I think this is great. This is a hex map that I have a feeling you will be seeing a lot of on a variety of different channels like the Dungeon Dive. This hex map will be very useful for a whole bunch of different kinds of adventures. Okay, so I did get the plastic doors. I'm not sure if I'm going if I will keep these or not. I might also give these away. Uh, just storing them and with everything, with all of the art already on the tiles, it's already in color. With all of the standees, with great art, the plastic, the gray plastic, and I, I will never paint these. I just really, really will stand out on the table. They are nice. They're chunky. There's your closed doors. And there's our open doors. But yeah, I, I just don't know. They, they, it, the, um, the tiles don't clip in to them like they do in Warhammer Quest. So you don't need to worry about anything like that. They do just kind of sit on the thresholds of two uh, tiles where they join. But uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just not sure about the uh, plastic tiles yet. Not sure what that is. Some kind of maybe a... Some kind of marker, first player token or something. It looks like there is quite a bit of space for the tiles. So I don't know, the tiles might actually fit back in the box. I'm going to put the doors on the floor here. Here we have our sleeves. So the sleeves will definitely uh, be donated to somebody. We have our, our large standee holders there. And our small standee holders there. A few more large ones. Nice. So we should have enough uh, standee holders to hold all of our standees. Everything that we need for a single adventure there. More large standees. Just unleashed a bag of plastic token. I think these are for initiative. I believe. The game uses an initiative system where you will be drawing um, dice or something from a bag and, you know, black tokens, the enemies go, white tokens, the heroes go. I think that's what these are. We'll have to double check that because those were not included in the prototype. There's another one of those. I have no idea. Hopefully we have some. Uh... Oh, those do have a little standee thing. Yep, no idea what those are, but that is kind of a cool little piece of art. I've seen that art around um, as the game has been advertised. And we have our metal coins, really nice heavy-duty metal coins there. Some nice dice. A kind of a marble texture there. And a few wooden tokens, so I guess this is a Euro game. 
a faux leather bag for something. I think probably money. Probably money goes in the faux leather bag. And then this will be our tray that will hopefully store all of our tiles. We do get a really nice little uh, dice dice tray. And I'm pretty excited for this. I just I like the size. It's nice and small for my small table. It has League of Dungeoneers in there. Very, very handy. All right, some storage baggies. Okay, so now we're getting into, I think, maybe, what is this? The third layer of stuff? Uh, <laughs> something like that. Our tracking sheets here. So we have well, our scenario trackers. We can keep track of our light sources, our weapons, dodging, statuses, uh, different heroes. These are wet erase or dry erase. I'm not sure which one. Uh, our treasure table for when we are searching certain elements on the different tiles, what kind of things you can find there. So fountains, you can search fountains. You can search pottery, sarcophagus. You can search statues, thrones, uh, torture tools. So all kinds of ways you can interact with the, uh, with the map there. We have our uh, handy dandy players uh, player aid here, turn sequence, uh, different threats in the uh, threat roll in combat, and kind of probably the main charts you will need uh, while you are actually playing the game there. And then we do get a book of um, of character sheets, so they are quite large. I might try to figure out a way. I will probably make a smaller character sheet not quite as or ornate and uh, have them be two on a page landscape mode for when I am playing if I end up playing with a full party of four full heroes but you get a few different uh, pictures here depending on what class you are going to be uh, playing as but you could probably condense all of this information down to a half a sheet and then you also do get a full book here of the uh, uh, of the uh, scenario uh, guides if you need to use more of these to keep track of other things during the scenario. Okay, so we have our dark pyramid. So this is the uh, the, the main expansion that was included in the all in. This was a, an add on that you could buy. So here we have, it looks like our, our quests for the Egyptian and desert themed. We have our main bestiary here, which is very cool. Like Warhammer Quest, League of Dungeoneers comes with a huge bestiary and also like a Dungeon Universalis. So I don't think anybody will be wanting for more monsters to kill. I know that is quite a bit of an issue with a lot of games they have limited bestiaries and you end up seeing the same enemies over and over and over again it becomes a little stale after a while but i yeah you will not have nobody will have that problem with uh with this book or with this game all kinds of monsters and things to fight different powers different abilities uh, they can be armed with different weapons and different armor. So yeah, people should be very, very happy with the, uh, the amount of uh, variety. We have the League of Dungeoneer Companion. So this was also a add-on. And I think this was the add-on that came with the kinds of the, the NPCs that you could hire to uh, help outfit a party. And I'm probably going to be using this quite a bit. Again, nice book, nice paper, very well done. We have our quick reference compendium. That is a killer uh, drawing there. I love that. We have like the heroes and the monsters there. That troll looks killer. So here we have our random squares for your different room shapes for when you need to, to place monsters randomly. You can do that. We have our different settlement uh, charts there, different kinds of equipment that we can buy, general equipment, uh, selling and repairing items. We have uh, an alchemy, al different alchemy tables for different kinds of potions and different kinds of ingredients that you can mix, spells, armor and weapon charts, power stones, magic items. More magic weapons, more magic items, legendary items. 
and our various dungeon events. I believe that the dungeon events, I think these are going to be expanded upon in a small expansion. And I'm actually getting a preview copy of the first kind of uh, post Kickstarter expansion. And that should be coming in in the next couple weeks, I believe. So we'll, we'll take a look at that when that when that arrives. Nice collection of charts there. That should be pretty useful. We have our quest book two. So this probably has our stretch goal quests in it. I know there were there was an opportunity for fans to create quests. So those are probably in here. We have a whole bunch of different quests, backer quests. Yep. So this is where the backers have their quests. Generating a quest. Nice little table there. And then a whole bunch of quests. So there should be plenty of things to do in League of Dungeoneers. I don't think people are going to be wanting for quests and things to do. And then finally, we have our nice hardbound rulebook. Very nice. It does feel and look a little better than the prototype rulebook that I was sent. I like the paper. It's not glossy. That's nice. Uh, looks like there's quite a bit of good art. Take a look here, a little detailed look. So we have the kingdom, some information, the index of art. Oh, that's cool. I like that. Very nice. That is a great art index. Way to kind of pay tribute to the artists. I would love to see more things like this in games like this. Very, very respectful of all of the hard work and craft that went into creating this game. Very nice. So we have index of art, introduction, game basics, uh, difficulty. I wonder what that says. I wonder if it has difficulty options. The game is designed to be played with four characters. You may, of course, go for fewer or more, but that will change the balance of the game accordingly. And you may decide to change some of the game parameters to counter this. Okay, yeah, that's cool. If you like to change the frequency of encounters, this is easily done by changing the chance of encounters. So I will probably play this like I do Warhammer Quest, where I play with two heroes and I just half all of the number of monsters. Or if I'm facing a boss monster alone, I will half his hit points or take a certain number of hit points uh, per hero and just scale the boss accordingly. Party management, creating your character, backgrounds, equipment, psychology, dungeoneering and combat. If it's not readily apparent, League of Dungeoneers is kind of the polar opposite of a lot of the games that I've been into for the last year or so. Uh, people have noticed that the dungeon dive has been shifting <laughs> towards more uh, simplistic games, games where I have more ability to control what's going on. Uh, this is kind of going back in that opposite direction, going back to something more like Dungeon Universalis or Advanced Hero Quest. So I, I'm a little weary about diving in and having to learn everything. But again, it does seem like a lot of the stuff is pretty modular. And so you can kind of use what you want, ignore what you want, create the kind of complexity that you are looking for. But there's also this also this book is not just rules. There are about 196 pages of rules and lore and tables. So lots of tables, lots of art. But then the end of the book here, starting on page two, about 200, are the quests. So there's all the quests there. All right. Now we're into my favorite thing about games, and that is cards, decks of cards. Okay, so we have a lot of cards here. Got one brick there. One brick. Another brick. More, 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 and even more. All right, so yeah, that's a lot of cards. So we do get a, stand, a small kind of standard deck of playing cards. And this can be used for generating random dungeons. I believe there's a chart where you draw a card and then you will match up what it says and uh, just to, to, to know what, what is coming next, what passage, what room, what junction is coming next. So nice. I like that that's a little small deck of standard playing cards. 
we have here some spells for close combat. I believe these are monster cards here. And these are the cards that you will use for when the monsters have certain items, armor, and spells. Don't remember if these were in the prototype. Not. Very kinds of armor here, weapons. Lots of armor and weapons here. Warhammers, crossbows, short bows, long bows, and then, yeah, so these I believe are just uh, nice handy cards to have in case your monsters are armed with certain things so you can keep track of what they have. We have probably our monster spells here. Raise dead, healing hands, summon demon, summon greater demon. Probably don't want to come across that too often. Yeah, I would bet dollars to donuts that these are the uh, cards that the monsters use. Okay, then we have some exploration cards. Different kinds of tombs, audience chambers, treasure chambers. It looks like the this deck here is the exploration deck for the, uh, the, the pyramid expansion. We have some traps here. Click, collapsing roofs, skeletons, mimics, trap doors, labyrinths, spear traps, arrows, poisonous darts, poisonous gas, and fireballs. All right. Some handy dandy uh, player age uh, cards there, always nice to have. And what do we have here? Mercenary. I think these are the bestiary cards, I believe. Uh, those were monsters as well. Let's see here. I know the monsters are broken up into different factions, so this might be one of the factions here. Uh, mercenaries, perhaps your mercenary faction. Waggot Neck Snapper, Three Fingered Alley, Brom the Mad. Uh, these might be, maybe these are things, maybe these are uh, some of these named mercenaries are uh, mercenaries that you can hire, perhaps. Maybe they're NPCs. Because then we get into more generic mercenaries like wizards, alchemists, barbarians, fighters, thieves, warrior priests, Dernan Deep Delver, Yosip Nahas, Captain Alan Black, Layla Stark, Archibald Red. Okay. Let's, uh, continue on let's look, take a look at the monster cards here i believe there's a handful of different different factions so first up here we have our magic monsters things like lurkers blood demons stone golems earth elementals water elementals and plague demons and then we have our reptiles a raptor a basilisk a naga a gecko Gecko Assassin, a Frogling, a Salamander, Giant Toads. Toads, Reptiles, I thought they were Amphibians. Uh, let's see here, we have some Orcs and Goblins, so our green skin enemies here. Orcs, Orc Brute, Shamans, Chieftains, Goblins, Cave Goblins, and Goblin Shamans. And then we have our Dark Elves. Dark Elf, Medusa, Dark Elf Assassin, Captain Sniper, Warlock, and a Drider. Some Bandits, always nice to slay some Bandits. Bandit Leader, Orc Chieftain, Berserker, Ogre, Giant, Fallen Knight, Warlock, and Ogre Berserker. We have a whole slew of undead enemies. Wow, mummies, mummies, priests, minotaur skeletons, mummy queens, necromancer skeletons, tomb guardians, wraiths, zombies, zombie ogre, vampire fledglings, so many. All right, so monsters, so all kinds of beasts. Common trolls, cave bears, giant leeches, uh, bat swarms. Gigantic snakes, slimes, giant rats, griffins, shamblers, hydras, satyrs, centaurs, wyverns, you name it, it's in there. And we have, wow, a whole bunch of quest monsters. Very cool. So these will be like bosses and mini bosses and things. The Broodmother, um, Igrahil, the Apprentice, Immel, the Caretaker, Gorm, Goldfried the Short, Madame Isabel, the map maker. Hmm. Dregrear, the wizard. All kinds of really cool evil NPCs to face off against there. All right, what's next? Uh, let's take a look at. So this is the main exploration deck for the for the main game for the main tiles here. Lots of exploration cards. So all of the tile. It looks like all of the tiles have their own card. Corridor, super cool. So. You should be able to use this deck here along with the tiles to create all kinds of random dungeons for really any kind of game that you want to play. Again, League of Dungeoneers, not only is it a full, complete, 
and robust game itself, but it is also a toolbox to be used for any number of other games. I wish that uh, Dungeon Universalis had something like this where you could create random dungeons easier. That is one thing that I think that game is kind of desperately missing. And I know they have the website for that, but it's just not the same. There really does need to be an out-of-the-box solution to create random quests and random dungeons in Dungeon Universalis. At least, at least in my opinion. So we have all of our spell cards here. Spells go from level 1 to level 6. Things like Fake Death, uh, Light Healing, Healing Hands, Strength and Body, Ice Pikes, Summon Water Elemental, Bolstered Mind, Summon Souls, Hold Creature, Speed, Fireball, Summon a Greater Demon. Nice. Raise dead. And then we have a small deck of prayers for our cleric style characters. Looks like those go up to level four. Bringer of Light. Litany of Mathea. Smite the Heretics. Strengths of Olner. Uh, Providence of Mathea. And be gone. We shall not falter. All right. Probably another deck here for for the expansion, for when you are doing your overland crawls, when you are moving from one quest to another, we will have our travel events that take place in the desert. So we have our desert travel events, we have our wilderness travel events, and our roads. I want to say that these are also getting slightly expanded in the expansion that I will be getting. I, I can't quite remember what uh, Michael said would be coming in that, but... Probably don't want to look too closely at these because these are always fun to experience uh, for that first time to have that that really cool kind of narrative surprise. But yeah, quite a few. I would, of course, I would like to see more of tr more travel events. I, I I can never really have enough travel e travel events. But if you start combining other elements, if you take things from you know Madeline Hale's uh, Table Fables, if you use things like you use things like your fantasy trip outdoor encounter cards or your labyrinth encounter cards uh, there are all kinds of things that you can add to this game if the variety starts to to, to wear thin after um you know probably a couple <laughs> a couple hundred hours of playing but uh that that is that is one of the things that we always like to see right is is just that variety that that um that feeling that that really anything can happen is such an important quality to these kinds of games and i believe this is our main loot deck or our 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 whole loot deck here and it's broken up into i think three different categories we have wonderful treasures we have fine treasures and mundane treasures so a lot of a lot of uh treasures in this game the card stock is really nice i like the feel of the cards they have a they have a nice quality feel to them these are all the different kinds of things you might find in your mundane crowbars, a javelin, a short, short bow, a whetstone, a skinning knife. And then we have all of our fine treasures, so our medium value treasures here. I like, the, I like how the item cards have tables. So you might find a sword, but then it might be a short sword, a broad sword, a long sword, or a great sword. Same with an axe, so that's pretty cool. You might find a blunt weapon, but it might be a morning star or a flail. So super cool. I like when cards have tables. So each one of those cards represents, you know, a handful of different things. So there's a variety within the variety. And finally, our wonderful treasures here, different kinds of male armor. I know there are uh, different body parts that you have to put armor on. And there is there are charts in combat for hitting certain parts of the body. So it does get into that kind of nitty gritty in the combat. A huge backpack, nice. Night Stalker armor, dragon scale armor, a flute, a wyvern cloak. All right, well, hey, you know what? That was a complete unboxing of the all-in pledge for League of Dungeoneers. I am super excited to get into this. Probably going to spend the next week or so on this game. So you'll see quite a few videos, I think, coming up in the near future on League of Dungeoneers. 
I was going to, at the very beginning of February, I was going to jump into a deep dive into Runebound 2nd Edition. I am waiting for one more fan printed expansion to arrive before I do that. So that might be perfect timing. That usually takes a while to come from Arts Cow or Printer Studio. So maybe that'll give me some time to really dive into League of Dungeoneers. So all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this long unboxing video, and we will talk to you later. Bye-bye.